There is a concept in AI and machine learning called transfer learning, which can play a crucial role in enabling advanced AI technologies to be accessible and effective in developing countries. Transfer learning is about copying a model built on a large, high quality data set and applying it to a smaller local data set. This prevents the need of building new models from scratch and enables us to transfer what the model has learned from one data set and apply it to another one. Now, how can this concept be applied to help improve healthcare quality in developing countries? Existing AI models that have been built from extensive data set gathered from developed countries can be fine tuned and applied to smaller data sets in developing countries. This makes it possible to deploy high performing complex AI tools in regions where large scale data collection is not possible. Although highlighting my concerns of telemedicine in a previous video on how it can remove patient doctor relationships, in remote underserved areas, this technology can be particularly useful. As smartphones are becoming more prominent in the developing world, we can utilize this technology to assist with virtual consultations, patient monitoring, and AI-driven diagnostics. This reduces the need for travel and the burden on healthcare practices. Rwanda struggles with accessibility and affordability of healthcare, whilst also facing challenges of rising chronic diseases and shortages in healthcare workforce. With a population of around 12 million, it was reported in 2019 that Rwanda only has 1,200 doctors. Babylon launched a AI triage tool in call centers to enable people without expert doctor knowledge to triage patients and give them the correct care. The system will collect information on patient symptoms and recommend a particular triage path. Not only does this save time for those limited number of doctors in Rwanda, but can also help reduce cost and improve overall efficiency. AI introduces efficacy to managing disease outbreaks and chronic conditions through predictive analytics. By incorporating various sources of data, including environmental and social factors, AI is able to provide early warning signs for potential healthcare crises, enabling more timely interventions and better handling of resources. Let us introduce a practical example. Malaria remains as one of the most significant global health challenges with approximately half of the world's population at risk of infection, especially in African and South Asian countries. Outbreak prediction is difficult because of several factors. The changing nature of the climate. Temperature and precipitation can affect mosquito survival, distribution and activity. Socio-demographic factors. When people move from rural to more urban areas, they might find themselves in conditions with poor sanitation and stagnant water which can aid mosquito breeding. And lastly, environmental risk factors. For example, clearing forests can allow more open space for sunlight. This can warm still water, enabling better conditions for mosquito reproduction. Associate Professor Sara Khalid of the Planetary Health Informatics Group wanted to address this challenge and to explore whether a machine learning approach that incorporated environmental factors could offer the potential for location-specific early warning tools for malaria. They developed a multi-dimensional LSTM model that simultaneously analyzed environmental indicators such as temperature, rainfall, vegetation measures, and nighttime light to predict malaria incidents in the South Asian belt, including Pakistan, Bangladesh, and India. Supply chains for medical supplies can be optimized through the help of AI by allocating resources to regions that need the supplies the most. Algorithms can be used to predict demand, which can improve inventory management, reducing waste, and prevent shortages of supplies to demanding areas. Let us take a look at the autonomous drone delivery system built by Zipline. Zipline operates at a national scale in Ghana and Rwanda, performing deliveries of medications, medical supplies, and other items to thousands of healthcare facilities through the use of autonomous drones. These drones are powered by rechargeable electric batteries and are equipped with an onboard acoustic-based detect and avoid system to enable safe autonomous flights. A rural hospital in Rwanda can send a text message and receive blood supplies within 15 to 30 minutes. Cure.ai 
an AI company based in India, has developed an AI platform that assists healthcare workers in diagnosing the infectious lung disease tuberculosis, TB, from x-rays. South Africa faces a severe TB crisis, with 280,000 cases and 54,000 deaths annually. The KwaZulu-Natal Department of Health collaborated with USAID, Think, LTE Medical Solutions and Cure.ai to enhance TB diagnosis using AI-augmented portable x-ray machines in mobile vans. The program screened 6,500 individuals in the first six months, identifying 187 tuberculosis cases that might have been missed. Although not ideal, but better than the alternative, such AI platforms enable the detection of diseases such as TB without the need for radiologists, providing a service to remote, underdeveloped regions where such specialities are scarce. We have explored several applications of AI in developing countries. The implementation and growth of such systems do not come without their challenges. Firstly, data quality and availability. Train models on bad data and you get nonsense responses. Larger efforts are needed in developing countries in data collection, labeling and storage to enable them to stand on their two feet and to adopt the technology without having to rely on external companies in developed regions. Ethical and privacy concerns. Regulatory frameworks might not be as developed in countries where big data adoption is new. Data privacy measures need to be implemented before the building of data storages and application of AI systems. Lastly, infrastructure and expertise. To ensure AI systems are adopted and maintained by developing countries, investments need to be made in healthcare infrastructure, such as more advanced X-rays and CT scans. To align with software built in developed countries, Strong internet connectivity is required to gain access to cloud technologies to deploy AI systems. Lastly, investments need to be made into AI education, teaching users the underlying structure and limitations of AI systems. That brings us to the end of this video. Thank you guys very much for watching. Please let me know your thoughts in the comments below, how you think AI technologies will be adopted in developing countries. I'll be very interested to know your ideas and thoughts on the topic. Thank you again for watching.